is a basic substance of life. It contains millions of microscopic organisms, one of which can be the bacterium Legionella. In factories and hospitals, and on the rooftops of hotels and offices, we can create the right conditions for Legionella to multiply through industrial processes, hot water systems, and cooling towers. It's not known exactly how systems can become seeded with Legionella. There is some evidence that the organism is washed into pipework during building construction. It may also enter in low numbers through the main's water supply. Airborne droplets or particles containing Legionella may contaminate reservoirs, open tanks and cooling ponds. Once a system is contaminated, and given the right temperature range, intermittent use or stagnation, Legionella will multiply and colonize that system. The rate at which it multiplies is determined by water temperature. Between 20 and 45 degrees Celsius, growth may be rapid, but above 50 degrees, the organism will begin to die. Towers like this are commonly used for industrial cooling systems and air conditioning, and have been associated with outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease. Within a square mile of any city center, there may be hundreds of units like this on rooftops. There may be a health hazard if any of them are producing spray containing Legionella. This may be carried long distances before becoming dilute enough to be harmless. To contract Legionnaire's disease, one must inhale the organism and it must penetrate deep into the lowest part of the lungs. And to do so, the organism must be contained in a particle of less than three thousandth of a millimeter or three micrometers in diameter. Now, particles of that size can remain suspended in air for prolonged periods of time. And scientifically, we have a term for such a suspension, which is an aerosol. Aerosols can be generated from water in a variety of ways. Simply turning on a tap may generate an aerosol, a shower, rainfall, or, in the case of cooling towers, the distribution system, the spray or the trough and gutter distribution system. An aerosol produces a range of droplet sizes. Larger ones fall to earth fairly rapidly, but smaller ones stay airborne and continue to evaporate down to an inhalable size that can cause infection. Legionnaire's disease is an infection caused by Legionella bacteria. Its main feature is pneumonia, so that it presents with fever, with chills, headache, aches and pains. A cough soon develops, usually a dry cough at first. Then a patient may get difficulty with breathing and have chest pain. And they're usually admitted to hospital towards the end of the first week of illness. Okay, so is that comfortable? Diagnosis of Legionnaire's disease relies on laboratory testing to distinguish it from other forms of pneumonia. Confirming an outbreak takes time for water samples from the suspected source to be cultured. This is a culture after 48 hours. And this after 72 hours. Most cases of Legionnaire's disease appear to be sporadic. In other words, no link is established with any other case of Legionnaire's disease. Most sporadic cases um, are indigenous, in other words, are contracted in this country, but each year up to a third of cases associated with travel abroad. Now, each year in this country, we detect between four and six outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease. The most common source of an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease is a hot water system in a large building, such as a hotel or a hospital. No cases of Legionnaire's disease have been attributed to domestic water systems. In large buildings, hot water services are one of the main sources of Legionnaire's disease. 
Legionella can multiply in various parts of the system. For example, in storage tanks, if they're in a warm place like a roof space, which is heated by the sun. If the temperature range is right, Legionella can multiply in calorifiers, the large hot water cylinders, and in the pipes, if water stands for long periods when the system is used intermittently. The best way to avoid risk in hot water systems is to store and circulate the water at the right temperature. Water should be stored at 60 degrees Celsius and reach the taps at 50 degrees. The system should be used frequently so that the water doesn't stand. The storage tanks and calorifiers of hot water systems should be inspected annually. It's good practice to drain water and other deposits from the bottom of calorifiers frequently to reduce the collection of sediment. If there's a build-up of slime, scum or other deposits, they should be drained, cleaned and disinfected. Cooling towers are the second most frequent source of outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease. A cooling tower is a heat exchange system. Warm water enters the tower at the top and is sprayed and splashed onto the packing material. As the water falls, air is blown or drawn upwards through the packing material, cooling the water. The air escapes from the top of the cooling tower, taking with it some water as aerosols. In order to reduce the escape of aerosols, drift eliminators are used. The cooled water is collected in the pond and recirculated to the air conditioning system or industrial process where it acquires heat. Then it's returned to the top of the cooling tower. Although there's a lot of spray here in an induced draft cooling tower, there is little history of these towers causing Legionnaire's disease. Cooling towers produce aerosols, and aerosols must be contained within the cooling tower because the conditions there are ideal for Legionella to multiply. Water is at about 30 degrees Celsius. It collects dust from the incoming air. Leaves and other materials may settle in the pond, providing food for the bacteria. And rust and corrosion products may provide more food. A slimy layer called a biofilm may build up on the surface of the tower, which may shelter these organisms. Because of this, regular cleaning and disinfection is necessary. Before scrubbing or using a hose, the operator must put on suitable respiratory protective equipment. Then everything is cleaned to remove sludge, scale, rust, biofilm and debris. Cleaning is done twice a year, or more frequently on particularly dusty industrial processes. On a regular basis, chemicals are added, either manually or automatically, to ensure the continued safe running of the system. Tests are performed to monitor the water quality and levels of chemicals and bacteria. Outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease can affect people at work or the general public, so there is great media interest. Several committees of inquiry have been set up by Parliament to investigate various aspects of Legionnaire's disease. And an approved code of practice has been published by the Health and Safety Commission to give advice. Most of the time, the risk of contracting Legionnaire's disease is low. But given the right circumstances, this can change rapidly to become a high risk. The risk is controllable. By following a regular program of cleaning and maintenance, the threat of Legionnaire's disease can be contained. Mm -hmm.